lounging, son. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan, and I am back talking some kind of spooky thriller. This isn't Halloween theme, but you know, trying to stay in line with my October theme of books I'm doing this month. I decided to do Dr. Midnight by Matt Wagner, John K. Snyder III. To me, it's like, well, he's always operating at night. You know, it kind of like feeds into that. Definitely like has a noir vibe to this book that that is absolutely phenomenal. This is the first time I'm reading it. You know, I'll read the back real quick for anybody that doesn't, you know, doesn't know about this book. So I have long been a fan of, I like the kind of like, you know, B, C list characters that, you know, maybe don't always have shine. But this is a new iteration of the golden age hero of Dr. Minute. So we have a completely new person under the cacao. And it's while investigating the manufacturers of a powerful new street drug, Dr. Peter Cross, gifted surgeon and sainted figure to the poor and hopeless in Portsmouth City, was permanently blinded in a tragic accident. Or was he? After weeks of suffering in a private world of blackness, Cross removed his bandages and found himself able to see, but only in perfect darkness. Thus, Peter Cross continues his fight against injustice as Dr. Midnight. Using his perfect night sight, he is hunting down those behind Portsmouth's newest super drug, but the terrible trio are not easily outwitted. Seeing these two team up, obviously they had they've worked together on Grendel, and it just a match made in heaven. This book, you know, for whatever reason, kind of escaped me. I became a fan of this version of Doctor Midnight, you know, through the JSA series that came out late '90s on all through the 2000s. Just something about him, the costume design. I love that he's got like this pet owl that he that he uses, and just an interesting way of how he has like I don't want to say sidekicks, but his acquaintances that he has throughout, you know, like that deliver him information or help him kind of in his quest for fighting crime and his being basically like, he's not a vigilante at first, but he definitely is well known throughout the community. And we open up and again, look, this just beautiful art, you know, we open up with this woman who's, you know, trying to get meet a drug dealer, but it's not really to get high. It's to kind of help with this rare disease, whatever, that like she can't be out in sunlight. Like she'll like, her skin like immediately burns you and it happens, you know, later on. But she's approached by, you know, Peter Cross and he's, you know, you really shouldn't smoke. It's the leading cause of lung cancer, heart disease, strokes and emphysema, also bad for hair, skin and nails. So he sees like that she, she's not what she seems, that she's not just trying to get drugs. And then you find out that this particular steroid called A39 is actually a derivative of Venom, which is the stuff that makes Bane, you know, the Batman villain, as strong as he is. We have the narration by Camilla Marlowe, who is like, she's basically the one that's like going to be rolling with Peter throughout this entire series. And I like that, you know, Nightlight is one of his, one of his agents. That's the word I was looking for earlier. But he's like, you know, contact Agent De Dennis. Tell him I've got the sample. The kid and his pack are headed north on 86 and then follow my tracking signal. So even before he gets abilities with his eye, you know, to with his eyesight, he's still fighting crime, right? In his own way. And he's a doctor, he's a surgeon, well renowned. Why does he do what he does? Like wh why? What are his motives behind this? And you eventually learn what got him into the town of Portsmouth and why kind of the emphasis of why he does what he does and throughout i'm telling you this art is just absolutely breathtaking and i love that again the names of the people he goes to anti-scum and basically i mean this whole thing is about taking down this mysterious drug that has overtaken this city and like they said that goes against this like this group called the terrible trio which we'll learn i like this too as he's like kind of seeking out his information you know He's called the Midnight Doctor, and which obviously plays into him taking on the mantle of Dr. Midnight. But he has a way of drinking, but then taking this pill that will take away the effects of the booze, which is kind of interesting, too. And, you know, so Camilla's like looking into his past, wondering, like, why? Who is this guy? You know, young hotshot genius graduated from Harvard Medical School, age 19. His father was a colleague of Alfred Nobel. Son of a gifted surgeon, developing advanced techniques in limb grafting, and then the scandal. A well-publicized battle over insurance fraud leads to his loss of residency. You know, the lawsuits threatened never filed, but, you know, that starts this, like, kind of windfall of him becoming this midnight doctor. And this, as she says, 
renegade physician. So obviously very skeptical of him. She finally comes to his insane looking house. She, she even mentions like it looks like it fell off the moon. And then he has this crazy laboratory. So he has all the makings of like what you need to start your kind of war on crime. And th again, so throughout this book, you know, they're going... The terrible trio is the one that's kind of flooding the city with this mysterious drug. I love the atmospheric tone by doing like these like like blue and then you contrast it with like these reds on the falling page and this crazy looking like nightclub scene. Just such a great pairing of Matt Wagner and John K. Snyder III. I mean, I think that what they've crafted here, creating this character from scratch with just basically just taking the name of Dr. Midnight and then kind of crafting this guy around that hero and bringing a new element to this character that has you know there's only been two iterations that have been very prominent i know there was a a woman that had the cowl of dr midnight as well at one point but just i mean every single page is something to behold you don't see books like this at dc or marvel anymore like where it's just focusing on a lesser known character putting great talent on it a painted book like this i mean you can't beat this stuff it's like a vulture shark and a, and a fox like on their heads like just crazy design work and i love this this is where he you know he he gets drugged and he's driving and as he's driving he gets into this horrible accident and walks off and then this is how you see that this is the last thing in the world he saw and you just see like completely go to stark white and the lack of him being able to see and you just hear his name being called out and we see the progression of like what happened with him as he's being worked on at the hospital and now his now his uh, license to practice medicine has been revoked. So what else is he going to do? And he's just kind of cut himself off from the world. Camilla comes and kind of, you know, shakes him out of it. And as he does, he goes outside. You see, I love this too, like the, the eyes on the owls. Awesome. And then takes those bandages off and realizes he can actually see. But he's seeing in a different way. So he's seeing on different spectrums. And that, I too, I think is a very... A very interesting power because it's really just his eyesight he doesn't have like his physical abilities aren't changed by that but just simply being able to see on a different spectrum and then he he's now going to use this ability to fight crime which is basically what he's kind of been doing but now he's going full force and you see him take on the mantle right here coming up with his different weapons to create darkness and we get the new dr midnight i love these pages too where it's just the you know the splatter of the paint like i would i would love to see the originals of this like just using like these strong colors strong green right here and you know now camilla she doesn't know where he's been peter's kind of been out of commission but he's still you know, he's still fighting crime comes upon these like guys like harassing this young girl brings her home and says you know i need to caution you against letting your daughter so go out so late all alone and man there's no chance of a balanced diet based on junk foods and soft drinks eats healthy stay well so just these like little aspects of him, you know, like he's always kind of in doctor mode. I like that about it. But he's also, he's not really a crime fighter. We don't see that he's trained and he's like done all these like different, mastered all these different fighting techniques. But he's still out there protecting his city, being able to see like the fingerprints. And that's how he gets into the secret base. I love this long panel with his cape just draped down. So good. And him in the shadow. It's super effective. And also have to call it that I like that they did a different city. It's like Portsmouth. I don't think it's been mentioned in DC before this title came out. So kind of cool to see something set not around any other major hero on its own. Completely devoid of any major DC characters in here. Like it's all self-contained. You can easily pick up this book whether or not you know anything about DC Comics at all. Definitely great entry point into this character. And I mean, you can see like he's fighting crime, but he like bit off a little more than he can chew. Races home to his to his house, but he gets followed there. And as he's like basically self-diagnosing himself in his laboratory, he just needs some rest. But his house warns him that somebody's approaching. And then as he like is interrogating him, he has him strapped down to this thing, and he drugged him with a truth serum. So I love the way like the 
words echo out. Little does, P- does uh, Dr. Midnight know that this dude had something in his tooth that loaded with the with that steroid and he fucking just hulks out breaks out of there and all the while camilla is also trying to help take these people down so she helps she figures out she does a little detective work of her own she finds a name now they're gonna go try to take him out that way such a great angle on this like gargoyle type thing but it's not an actual gargoyle you see this person just sitting off see so like there's a cockiness to him where he just like walks into this building and then Thinks he can get away with it, but he's not. The terrible trio has him strapped up, but he too has a way of breaking out because he had something underneath a fake thumbnail, a coil of rolled surgical steel, which snaps into shape as an effective lockpick. Love the purples on this page too. But yeah, just, you know, phenomenal book, full of some great stuff in here, great shots, just fantastic storytelling by these two masters of the craft. And a great introduction to a brand new character who ended up, you know, like being in JSA for quite some time. I don't think he's really been seen as much he's more in the background. You know, usually when, you know, they need a doctor to kind of examine something, they'll bring him into it. I would love to see more of him in this, the current iteration of DC with their new era. Like, you know, get some more spotlight on some of these like B C list character. I hate saying that, but I mean, like you know, like they're not the major characters, obviously. But there's, there's so much you can do with them, and take them in so many cool directions. I love this too. Again, just like using these like colors to convey the emotions of the different pages. The green underwater, it's so good. Yeah, that, I won't spoil the end, but you know, fantastic story. Great way to. It's a great way to update a golden age character and i think that there's room to do that with you know some of the older concepts taking it putting a fresh spin on it or even just bringing back some of the characters that we just haven't seen in a while give them a spotlight dc is full of rich characters and you know definitely a good october read you know doesn't have like super horror elements but kind of has a little bit in there so go pick up the book if you can it's you know not hard to find you can hit it Hit up eBay if you can. If your local comic shop doesn't have it, it's not super expensive, but well worth your time and money. And make sure you like, follow, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, I'm out.